A girl heard a sharp crash outside the cabin, she looked out curiously, a hand broke the glass and ripped her neck open, the young girl died a horrible death, the hideous looking monster hung upside down in front of the window, staring at the man in front of him with a deadly stare, the man was scared out of his mind. In 1943, the Japanese biochemical unit conducted human experiments in a secret institute in the Philippines. They succeeded in creating a biochemical monster, just as the Japanese officers were cheering. There was an accident on the lab bench. The monster's heartbeat suddenly accelerated, and its body kept twitching. The next second it broke free, went on a rampage, and unleashed a crushing massacre on all the Japanese soldiers on the scene. The monster was invulnerable to swords and guns, and conventional weapons did not work at all. In an instant, all the Japanese soldiers at the scene were brutally killed, and the monster's bloody killings were just beginning. Decades later, the Korean government was ready to extradite a group of wanted criminals from the Philippines. They use an ocean-going cargo ship as their transport. The escort was carried out by Korean police officers Lee Suk-woo and Lee de -yun. The police officers put the vicious criminals in separate cabins. On the other hand, a mysterious force has taken over the Korea Maritime Bureau. The leader is Oh dae Woon. They kicked out all the employees of the Maritime Bureau, and it seems that something big is about to happen. Inside the cargo ship, the criminal police chain Jung Do, a felon, and Do Il, a silent man, to separate tubes. At this moment, the medical officer began to secretly fill the bag with medical instruments and medicines behind the nurse's back. Fearing that the nurse would find out about his actions, he then walked into the elevator and according to the hidden map came to the gas cabin, he found a closed door, and here was a hidden space that was isolated. When he walked in, a man brought him to the patient. When he took a closer look, this man was the same monster that the Japanese army had transformed. After decades, this monster was still alive. When the medical officer took off the monster's mask, he found that his mouth was full of maggots. This was clearly a dead man, which scared him. They told him to sedate the monster. Apparently, the monster could go berserk at any moment. He hurriedly took out the potion and carefully stabbed it into the monster's neck, and then hurriedly left. On the other hand, Zhang Du, who was in custody, spat out a bloody pin from his mouth when the guard wasn't looking and immediately pried up the handcuffs. When crew member Kim Kyute passed by the guard's room, he noticed that the guard was lazy and his guard force was very weak. When he saw the time, he gathered four of his men in the food storage room and pried open three boxes disguised as fruits and vegetables. Inside was a large number of weapons and equipment. The men were quickly and fully armed. The real identity of these men was that they were gang members. To infiltrate the cargo ship, they killed five crew members beforehand and took their identities. Zhang Du also managed to open the handcuffs, but he did not rush to do so, seemingly waiting for a signal. Kim Kyute leads four of his men out of the storage room, but one of his men accidentally hit the bulkhead and made a loud noise. This instantly drew the attention of three police officers, and the police clearly saw the submachine guns carried by his men. When Kim Kyute saw that the situation was getting out of hand, he stopped pretending, pulled out his pistol, and rushed toward the police, killing them. Kim Kyute broke into the cockpit with his men and took out several people as soon as they entered, then find out the location of all communication devices and destroy them one by one to lose contact with the outside world. He also had his men board the communication transmitter and cut the signal wires one by one. At the same time, Oh Dae Wung's troops also lost the cargo ship's message on the screen. They tried to talk through various means but got no response. Oh Dae Wung immediately realized that something was wrong and asked his men to quickly deploy the satellite to find the freighter. At that moment, Lee De Yun, who was guarding the prisoner, also found that her cell phone had no signal and her walkie-talkie could not be connected. She grabbed her gun and was ready to go outside to check the situation. A guard noticed a noise on Zhang Du's side. Before he could get close, Zhang Du launched a surprise attack and took the guard by surprise. Kim Kyute's men also arrived and fought with the police in the corridor. The police were no match for the killers and were all killed in a matter of seconds. At that moment, Zhang Du also killed the police in front of him. It turns out that Zhang Du was the boss of these people. The escorted prisoners were all released. Faced with the corpses of police officers, only Du Il has no expression.
Lee Suk Woo, who heard the gunshots, rushed to the cab with Lee Dae-yun and the others. A fierce firefight ensued as soon as the two sides met. Lee Suk Woo and Lee Dae-yun had to hide in the face of the enemy's fierce fire. The enemy slowly approached Lee Suk Woo's direction. Lee Dae-yun seized the opportunity and hit the enemy's leg. Lee Suk Woo fell down and killed the enemy. Kim Kyu Tae, who was alone, threw down his machine gun and he took out his pistol. Lee Dae-yun took this opportunity to shift his position. Dong Wook calmly got up and kidnapped a crew member, using this as blackmail. He asked the police to drop their pistols. As the police got up, Kim Kyu-tae also noticed something was wrong. Lee Dae-yun then lunged at him. Lee Suk-woo took the opportunity to shoot him down. After this battle, the police lost another comrade. On the other hand, a large amount of blood dripped down the pipe onto the monster's face. The sleeping monster woke up instantly when he smelled the blood. Zhang Du brings a group of prisoners to the engine room, ready to kill all the crew and force the cargo ship to stop on the high seas. Just when the last engineer was left, Duayel stopped his attack and advised him to stop. The scene was witnessed by police officer Lee Suk Woo and others who came to the scene. One of the prisoners tried to surrender and was shot dead by them. Lee Suk Woo tried to return fire but was stopped by his men. It turns out that there is only one engine here, and once it is hit, the cargo ship will completely lose power. The two sides had to engage in a physical battle to determine the winner. Both sides fought in the small space. One prisoner fled in a hurry. He had just climbed up the ladder. Suddenly the monster came down from the sky and blocked his way, then kicked him out. This force really stunned the crowd at the scene. The monster sensed the people below. Although he had no eyes, he could clearly sense the body temperature of everyone. After that, it was a one-sided massacre by the monster. Because it is too bloody, so I will not show you. The bearded man who has never seen such a ruthless man, is directly scared and pissed. Lee Suk Woo also tried to go forward, but was knocked out by the monster at once. Zhang Du picked up the submachine gun and shot continuously. Although it hit the monster, it did not cause substantial damage to the monster. Instead, he was sent flying by the monster with a hammer. Subsequently, he was smashed into a pulp by the monster. Due to the melee just now, the engine was also damaged. The freighter lost power and had to stop on the high seas. Now there are only four people left in the cabin, including Lee Suk Woo, Lee Dae Yun, and Du Il. They rushed to escape from the engine room, but the monster didn't intend to let them go and came at the moment when the cabin door was closed. Luckily Du Il kicked the monster inside. Do you think the monster was locked up? Then you are wrong. On the other hand, Oh Dae Wong spotted the lights on the deck of the cargo ship via satellite. And the cargo ship was stationary on the sea and not moving. He immediately realized that the monster was escorting might have had an accident. At that moment, his cell phone rang, and the person he spoke with was the CEO of the bio company. Strangely enough, the other party also had the same mark on his chest as the monster. The other party ordered bringing the monster back to Korea at all costs. The task of wiping his ass fell on Oday Wong, which made him so angry that he punched through the transformer box. Lee Suk Woo and the others came to the corridor and happened to meet the medical officer who had escaped. The medical officer, in a panic, blurted out that he had injected the monster with a tranquilizer. In order to find out the monster's weakness, Lee Dae-yun and the others went to the monster's previous hiding place under the guidance of the medical officer. Here they discovered the monster's secret. It turns out that in 1943, the Japanese army developed an enhancement agent in a secret institute in the Philippines. It has experimented on prisoners with amputated limbs. Once successfully injected, they would develop wolf genetic traits, extremely sensitive to blood and sound. Physical ability was five times that of an ordinary adult. And in modern tests, it was found that the cells of the test subjects never aged. In other words, this enhancer not only enhances the bestiality and physical ability of the human body but also stops human aging and prolongs lifespan. This is equivalent to immortality medicine. This made several people incredulous. At this moment, a helicopter gunship was approaching the cargo ship. The leader of the team is Oh Dae Woon. He gave the order for everyone to be injected with the booster. Immediately, a heavily armed soldier put a blue potion into a syringe and injected it into his neck. His eyes instantly turned blue. On the other hand, Lee Suk Woo escaped into the kitchen with one of the surviving prisoners, Choi Myun Ju. He put Choi Myun Ju in cold storage. He just grabbed a pistol and pointed it at the door. The next second, the door was broken open. The monster easily dodged the bullet. Lee Suk Woo was no match for the monster and was thrown out directly. He grabbed a dagger and stabbed it into the monster's arm the moment it rushed over. After that, 
He bit down on his opponent's arm. No matter how the monster attacked him, he didn't let go of his mouth. He bit off the arm of the monster hard. And before he died, he had to exchange for a part of the monster. Soon, Oh Dae Wong came into the cabin with his man. Choi Myung Ju also trembled and came to the side of several people. Choi Myung Ju was now frightened by the monster and was talking nonsense. The impatient Oh Dae Wong raised his hand and shot her in the head. At that moment, Lee Da Yun arrived with the medical officer and others. She watched Oh Dae Wong and the others kill Choi Myung Ju. Lee Da Yun immediately raises her gun and asks Oh Dae Wong who he is. However, the next moment, she was shot by Oh Dae Wong. Do I L ran over and saw the bloody scene? In a fit of rage, he attacked Oh Dae Wong and was at his side in almost no time, and killed his men brutally. He then pinned Oh Dae Wong to the wall. It was then that Oh Dae Wong realized that the man in front of him was not simple. He reached out and peeled off his clothes and found that his body was also marked with the mark of transformation. Du Il was also a transformer. It was only then that Oh Dae Wong realized that the person the CEO had asked him to take away was actually Du Il. It turns out that years ago, there was a gang fight in a warehouse, and Du Il was the one that lasted until the end. Oh Dae Wong came in with his men to collect the experiments. They needed to use half-dead people for experiments. During the experiment, most of them died on the test bench, and Du Il was no exception. He lost his heartbeat shortly after being injected with the enhancement agent, and their bodies were thrown into the pit. But Du Il came to life. He also married and had children and started a new life. However, one day soon after, Oh Dae Wong found his home and brutally murdered his wife. Faced with his young children, the inhumane Oh Dae Wong raised his knife. Faced with the enemy who killed his wife and son, Du Il was just about to make his move when the monster approached. Oh Dae Wong immediately ordered to shoot. The monster removed the hatch to use as a shield and instantly killed all of Oh Dae Wong's men. Seeing that his men were no match for the monster, Oh Dae Wong directly fought with the monster. After one round of battle, the monster was easily defeated by Oh Dae Wong. After that, Oh Dae Wong stomped on the ground, and the undead monster was destroyed. What remains is the ultimate showdown between Du Il and Oh Dae Wong. They fought from the cabin to the outside of the ship. While they were in a stalemate, Oh Dae Wong, who thought he had the victory in hand, began to mock Du Il's dead wife and son. This caused Du Il's anger to explode to its peak. After a fight, he stabbed Oh Dae Wong in the heart and then kicked Oh Dae Wong off the boat with a heavy kick. Knowing that Oh Dae Wong would not die, he jumped down and stabbed Oh Dae Wong in the throat to avenge the death of his wife and son. The scene shifts to a small island where the CEO arrives at a private prison, where he meets a boy in bondage. It turns out that Oh Dae Wong did not kill Du Il's son at that time. He found that Du Il's modified genes were passed on to his son, which would be a perfect test subject, and brought him here and raised him to adulthood. On the other hand, Du Il surfaced from the sea. He arrives on the island and walks in the direction of the prison cell. I guess this is also to lay the groundwork for the sequel. That's it for today's story. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you next time.